The government is being accused of lacking ambition when it comes to remote working. The Irish Congress of Trade Unions says a current bill on the right to request remote working doesn't go far enough. It comes as a new report by an Arctis committee recommended the law being tightened to make it harder for employers to refuse uh, requests. And indeed, even uh, when that uh, was being flagged before it was being introduced, uh, a lot of obvious problems, uh, well, effectively, it was. It seemed to be loaded towards the uh, employer to um, have plenty of reason uh, to refuse an employee the right to work from home. Cathy McKenna is based in Donegal Town, communications uh, manager of Grow Remote. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us, Cathy. Good morning. What's uh, Grow Remote? What's its role? So Grow Remote is a social enterprise. We're a not-for-profit and we are dedicated to making remote working visible and accessible to everyone. And this is to drive economic and social development in areas of the country where traditionally people would have had to leave to get great employment opportunities. This kind of came a wee bit in a wave in that there was a push to uh, allow people to work remotely. uh, And then that was, I think, accelerated uh, through COVID, a lot of people uh, uh, adopted it. There seems to be a push back now, um, particularly from employers. In, I mean, obviously, you've got the high profile ones like Nash, Nash, internationally, like Elon Musk, but even locally, where, you know, we all know people where employers are saying, listen, we prefer you back in the office now. Is, is, is that how you're seeing it as someone who works sort of, uh, well, knows much more about it than I do? Well, it's a very complex topic, Greg. I mean, I suppose if employers are hesitant to transition to remote, what we are seeing is that it's because it is actually a really significant change and transformation project to undertake to go from what is hundreds of years of traditional office-based work to a remote-first model. Um, So that's the first thing to bear in mind. The second thing to bear in mind is that companies do need support um, if they're going to transition to a remote-first model. But on the other hand, the trend towards remote working was well established before COVID. It obviously accelerated in ways that we could never have predicted. Um, But the government's, I suppose, support for uh, remote working and its belief in it as a driver of um, social equality, particularly in rural areas, has been captured in various important documents. Um, two of the really important ones are called Making Remote Work and, and Our Rural Future, which is on the depart- under the Department of um, Community and Rural Development. Yeah, but the current bill is, a lot of people might feel like it looks like we're doing something, but really we're not. In other words, there's, there's way more reasons why an employer can refuse an employee uh, to, to sort of work remotely than, than it's stacked in the employer's favour. Do you see it like that? Well... Not not especially because I suppose, first of all, the success or failure of remote working, whether that's in Donegal, whether that's in Ireland or whether it's globally, does not lie within legislation alone. Um, and secondly, what we would, uh, what we hope the final bill now, and as you mentioned, the, the report from the committee that was undertaking pre-legis- pre-legislative scrutiny was just released there a couple of days ago. Um, what we want to see is that the kind of the spirit and the letter of the bill is formulated in such a way that it supports and empowers companies to say yes to remote working because it is good it's good for people it's good for profit it's good for planet we know that employees want it um and as i said the trend towards remote working as a driver of um you know as a way to deepen your uh, talent pool that's available to you to deepen your productivity and your employee engagement was well in place and growing before COVID. Is there a difference between working remotely from home and working remotely in a hub? Um, I suppose there's as many ways to work remotely as there probably are remote workers mm. um, is, one, is one way to think about it. Um, when it comes to hubs, um, definitely they solve for a couple of challenges that's, that remote working can present, such as isolation and the feeling to be amongst a buzzy atmosphere, things like that. Um, if that's what drives your productivity personally, my productivity is best served um, at home. And I know that a lot of people feel like that as well. But there is a, somewhat of a challenge. There is a very vibrant co-working scene in Donegal. There's um, 11 or 12 uh, co-working hubs and there's a couple of more in the pipeline. But there is a challenge in that um, many of the big employers don't um, pay for the stipends or the, the cost of working from a remote hub. So I suppose one of the things that we'd love to see is that the employers who do pay those stipends working in a remote are really promoted here in Donegal to, to really support that system. 
Uh, a text here. I'm a business owner. I'd rather see my staff and know how they're doing. It's not a right to work remotely, they believe. Uh, it's not a government issue. So in other words, rather than government legislating for it, employers should be able to, you know, research it, see the benefits of it, make a choice. If it works for them, it does, uh, but not to be sort of legislated, shamed or, or, or forced into doing something they, they don't want to do. It's their business, their business model. I don't think anyone is suggesting that um, any business should be forced into a model of remote working. Um, certainly, well, you're not kind uh, of though. I mean, if if everyone has a right to wor- work remotely, uh, and you can go to your employer and say, "Look, I want to work remotely here," uh, and, and the employer has to give very good reason to not allow that to happen. Um, so that is, I mean, it is. I know you're tr- probably trying to avoid, you know, this being confrontational with uh, employers, but they they. I think they're justified and feel they are being forced into this to some extent, depending on the industry they're in. We wouldn't like to think that anyone feels that they're that they're being forced into it. Now, obviously, depending on your industry, depending on the customers that you serve, depending on the way that you meet your customers' needs, remote working has to work for the business. And in general, you know, looking at business as a whole and not just one particular business, remote working has to work for the business before it can work for that business's employees. So it has to work for both of them. Um, so supporting, um, so building the business case and supporting businesses to see the benefits um, and to understand, for example, that you can be, you can hire um, on board and ramp up an employee very, very successfully, uh, fully remotely. I'm an example of it. My husband is an example of it. And there's thousands, thousands of examples of it all over the country. Um, and indeed in, in Donegal as well. Um, we definitely are very strongly focused on how employers can make this work for themselves and supporting them. We have um, a suite of supports for employers um, and we know that there are, you know, there's, there's, you know, Content Llama is a Donegal company that works remotely. John Couture is a Donegal company that works remotely and it works really well for them. And then there's larger companies that employ lots and lots of employees here um, and we are we are mapping them at the moment. Um, so Grow Remote is, is running a, a mapping project just to find out more and just get a line of sight on the people that are working remotely, where they're working remotely and who they're working remotely What's for. it telling us, um, Cathy? So what it's telling us, one of the cool things it's telling us is that Donegal is the fourth most popular county in Ireland for remote employment at the moment. Now, we are at the early stages of this. We, it, was, it was launched a couple of months ago. And as you can imagine, it's a fairly involved project. Um, but the fourth most popular county in Ireland for remote um, employment and some of the big employers, the bigger kind of global employers are Shopify Automatic, um, Coca-Cola and eBay are represented um, here as well. Um, it is showing us where um, there's clusters of remote workers and, and we're seeing that uh, replicated around the country. The So the remote workers tend to be in clusters that seems to be connected around connectivity and a lot of employers themselves also like to employ remotely in clusters geographical clusters as well and things like that but it's at the very early stages as I say I can see um one very interesting aspect I think just looking at the map in Donegal here is that there's a super cluster in Aaron Moore and indeed there's a really active remote worker community in Aaron Moore as well as on um as well as in Donegal yeah. itself as well and I'm also and you're also conscious of an awful lot of people listening to this program today work in uh, perhaps construction in retail, in our in, our, in in restaurants, in bars, and this is completely irrelevant to them. Uh, for the majority of them working in it, I just wonder if we do sort of see a uh, if we head towards a recession. Uh, I just wonder if this kind of conversation that me me and you are having right now really if it'll sort of dwindle away to some extent, or, or maybe it might be the opposite. I don't know. What do you think? I just think um, if things, I think if we stop coming under pressure. Uh, as a as a nation, or even beyond that, uh, we'll 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 probably say, well, listen, I, you know, we all have to dig in here. Whatever's best for the businesses, you know, that sort of way. I feel like mm-hmm. this this conversation might be feel outdated in a year's time to be having publicly. Yeah, I, I- I'm not sure because, as I said, the, the trend towards remote working was well entrenched before COVID. So this isn't exactly a brand new thing or like a knee jerk reaction in any sense at all. Um, and I suppose one of the major advantages of a thriving and robust remote working ecosystem is that people can live and work in a place where cost of living is manageable and mm. they can be more in control of their of their wider costs. Yeah, so and, it might become even more attractive then. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so and and let's not forget about the sustainability angle of it as well. You know, there there are some numbers to say that remote working can have huge potential benefits towards 
uh, companies are coming under more scrutiny these days to be more sustainable and to meet sustainable development goals. And we see remote working as a, as a really um, key pillar of that. OK, so uh, we started off the conversation with the Irish Congress of Trade Union, Union saying the current bill on the right to request remote working doesn't go far enough. Uh, Senator Marie Sherlock says the government doesn't seem interested in making it work. Is your review, your view, more optimistic than uh, that of the uh, ICTU and uh, the the senator I mentioned? Yeah. So, making remote work is the government's remote working policy framework, and our rural future is um, the rural development framework, and they both capture their commitment to and support of remote working. We certainly see um, government support in a very tangible and visible way um, for remote working as um, as a, uh, a key part of the of the the remote working landscape in Ireland going forward, and the remote and the work working landscape more wide more widely. Thank you so very much indeed. It's been a nice speaking to you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. All Thank right, you, take care of yourself. Uh, that is uh, Kathy McKenna, and Kathy is based in Donegal Town and communications manager there with uh, Grow Remote.